Greetings. This is Arvette McLean of Speak the Universe Listens. As a very young person, I always felt that I carried the weight of the world on my shoulders, having to make grown-up decisions in order to survive a life marked with physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. While my face was smiling on the outside, on the inside, I always secretly cried and felt miserable. However, over the years, I learned some gems that helped to turn my life around. I now get to live the life of my dreams, filled with love, travel, and wonderment. And I am absolutely passionate about sharing what I have learned with you. If you want to live your best life, tune in each week as I, along with some amazing guests, share these life-changing gems with you inspired to be more, do more, have more. Greetings. Today's topic is feeding your spirit. And today we have a guest with us, Erica Ashmead. And I actually invited Erica on the show today because she is someone who I have come to know who has come through a very difficult time in her life and then she has just totally blossomed and it seemed like to me it seemed like in a short amount of time one thing it was she was one way one minute and then the next it seemed like she was a totally different way and so I was just curious to see what was going on in her mind in order to help her to make these shifts. So Erica actually is Chef Erica, mm -hmm. and she is the owner of two businesses. She has um, Sage, I'm sorry, Sugar and Sage Consulting, mm -hmm. as well as the owner of House of Lazuli. Lazuli. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so um, she is a business owner, and she is someone with the most amazing spirit. So welcome to the show today. Well, thank you. That was an amazing introduction. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So if you can tell us a little bit about, I guess, your pre-life. Okay. Um, well, uh, my life consisted of a lot of battles, a lot of domestic violence and dysfunction within my family. Mm -hmm. um, my mother went through a domestic violence relationship. Which is funny because when I was growing up, I always said, well, why doesn't she just leave? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I came into a domestic violence relationship and I see how hard it was, you know, to love someone and take, you know, the pain that came with that. Mm -hmm. um, but there was that and there was a lot of moving within my childhood and... Um, depression and mental illness within my family um, so as well as binge eating and so it's just a lot of struggle mm -hmm. at that time okay so um, as far as the binge eating when was that what period of your life did that take place um, well it took place shortly after my mother passed away mm -hmm. which was 2011 um, so about 2012, 2013, that's when I started to notice a change in me, my spirit, what I was allowing. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, it was just a, a terrible time because I was, I didn't know how to grieve mm -hmm. the loss. Um, but at that time is when I met my former boyfriend and he was much older mm -hmm. you know at that age I was 25 when I met him mm -hmm. he was 55 okay you know mm -hmm. so um I thought that because he was older and he was you know into the Christian lifestyle and read his bible that oh this is this is for me mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. along with that came a lot of his uh his issues, things that he was battling. Um, so we went through that. And um, for four years, it was just a lot of chaos and dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And he started using drugs and things of that nature. So it was, I thought that I can love him 
through that Mm -hmm. and heal him. Mm -hmm. But in turn, I was brought down. Right. Um, But once I did leave that relationship and I moved back to Richmond, um, it's like everything slowed down. And I remember when I first moved to Richmond when I was 12, um, that I felt the same way. And that's when I started writing poetry and I felt more in touch with myself. So I think that being here in Richmond is what had to happen for me to start my healing. Mm -hmm. And so typically I would never ask someone to go back into the past Mm -hmm. because um, we just want to move forward. Right. However, I do want you to give us a little more insight for people who may be in this situation. Right. Um, and so in terms of, I know you say your background, like in your childhood, mm-hmm. there was a lot of, it, it was domestic abuse. Right. Um, now, was that just with your mother or was that with you as well? Um, it was with me as well, along with, you know, sexual abuse um, as well from family members um so and I kept that to myself for a very long time Mm -hmm. not till recently did I divulge that Mm -hmm. to my family Mm -hmm. so okay and so how did you feel about yourself as a young person um I think that when you're young and things are dysfunctional every day that's your normal Mm -hmm. And you begin to believe that that's how it is. Mm -hmm. That's how life is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, Not until I started spending time at other people's house, other children, Mm -hmm. friends, that I see, oh, this is how a family, (laughs) (laughs) oh, okay, Mm -hmm. this is something new. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would always spend time with the other families. Mm -hmm. So, um, but now that I look back, I'm like, wow, that wasn't correct. And it's okay to desire, you know, to be whole Mm -hmm. in a family setting. And I'm glad that I'm able to do that now, you know, with my relationship as well as my younger brother who, you know, he has three children and a loving wife. He takes care of her. Mm -hmm. So I'm just so glad that it's, you know, that we have the chance to not follow through with that generational right yeah exactly (laughs) so when you this is always a question that I have Mm -hmm. and you know I've lived it so I I know from my experience Mm -hmm. um pretty much the answer but um when you met the person Mm -hmm. um the 55 year old Mm -hmm. what initially drew you two together like were there any like, I know you painted the picture of him being a Christian mm-hmm. and that type of thing, but were there any other signs that you may have um, picked up on but didn't really know that you were picking up on it? Um, I think it was um, the fact that he his, his spirit was familiar, and not until after I left did I notice that he had the same spirit as my stepfather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... I guess no matter if it's good or bad, we just naturally want to attach ourselves to what's what's familiar okay. to us. Right. So mm-hmm. that was that was what <laughs> brought me to him. Right. And we just started a organic conversation on the bus because we worked at the same place, mm-hmm. and he started talking to me about God, you know. And at that time, I was trying to be celibate, mm-hmm. you know, and get my relationship with God right. Mm-hmm. So when he told me that he was as well, I was like, oh, my goodness, (laughs) this is my husband. (laughs) (laughs) But it was not that. (laughs) Okay. So um, as time went on and you started seeing, okay, I'm I'm thinking I'm going to love him through this. Mm -hmm. At what point did you start to realize that? Uh, when hospital visits became a regular thing, mm-hmm. um, the last incident, um, I had a concussion, broken cheekbone, um, broken ribs, you know, so at that point, you know, my family even was, they were tired of, you know, hearing about it mm-hmm. and going back. So they started to separate themselves mm-hmm. as well. So... 
at that point I said, you know what, I want to live. Mm-hmm. This is not how people live. And I want to be truly happy. Mm-hmm. Like, if I can love this person this much and they're doing this to me, how awesome would it be to love somebody who can love me the same way mm-hmm. that I love? Right. You know, so. Yeah, so I just, I said, you know what? Pack the suitcase. <laughs> And I came back to Richmond. Okay. Seventy dollars in my bank account. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. So, um, the question that we always get is when people are in that space, mm-hmm. right? They haven't made the decision, mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to live, or um, I'm I'm better than this, so mm-hmm. I deserve more. Mm-hmm. They haven't quite made that right. decision. Um, do you? have the answer to what happens in between I haven't quite gotten there and now I'm here mm-hmm. you have to get tired of being sick and tired and you're the only person that can determine that and I've gone back at least five or six times mm-hmm. so Everybody has a breaking point, whether that's a week, months, some years. Mm -hmm. At some point, you you come to your own realization that this is not for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just took that last time for me to say, okay, this is not going to work. Now, at that time, I was not yet there saying, oh, I'm worth more than this Mm -hmm. all I said was I can't take this right so it wasn't until maybe two years after that I realized what it is that I'm worth minus a relationship because I was single Mm -hmm. at that time Mm -hmm. when I realized it and that's when I went into therapy Mm -hmm. so a lot of people They say there's a negative stigma about therapy and, you know, why do you need to talk to somebody who doesn't know you? But it's good to have a third party looking in on your situation, what you're going through, and and provide you the tools, you know, to think differently. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, put another perspective or look at a situation with a a new, fresh eye, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and that's what therapy provided me. So, um, it's called a dialectal behavioral therapy, mm-hmm. um, where they're basically training your mind to use different uh, neuros in your brain, mm-hmm. neural paths, mm-hmm. to think of different options. So, it's like you're in the forest and you're chopping down the trees to make a path. And you always go down that same path, so now you don't have to chop down any trees. But now we're going to forge through a new path. Mm-hmm. So that's basically what, what they were doing with oh, therapy. That's really interesting. So um, you don't have to give us an example from your life, but if you can give us an example, like how does that play out in real life? Um, so, for instance, um, we were working on... what. Well, I can't give an example for okay. me because um, work- I was working on depression and um, I was working on binge eating and with that it was, okay, I'm having a meal, let's check in during the meal. Mm-hmm. Are you full? Are you satisfied? Once that meal is done, I'm usually the person that wants to have seconds or thirds you know, but now we're introducing new tools. Okay, let's, you know, have that first serving. Let's check back in an hour. Check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, how are you feeling? What does your stomach feel like? Are you feeling physical hunger? Are you feeling emotional hunger? And And it's so weird that, you know, all your life, well, all my life, I never check in with myself. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you feel? <laughs> I'm asking people all the time, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> no, how am I doing? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was different. Um, another thing that they brought 
to my attention was values. You know, somebody asked me, okay, what are your values? What are your top values? And I was like, I never thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we explored that and, you know, just learning what you value. Now my eyes are so open to uh, knowing what I want, what I deserve. And I think that was the, the bottom line. And I, don't, I, I guess I wish that, you know, my mom would have been like, okay, well, let's learn about values. Mm-hmm. I don't really think that's a normal thing that we talk about in the home or when we're bringing up children. You know, what are your values? Mm-hmm. And this is a little bit jumping, but one thing that I, I had an opportunity to spend like a, about two uninterrupted hours with you. Mm-hmm. And in that time, you told me so many things about what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know you were like, oh, I want a, a little uh, a house on a farm. Yeah. And, you know, I want animals and mm-hmm. you know, I want to cook for people. And, yep. I, you know, and you just had like all these different things like I want this, I mm-hmm. want that, I want this. And I found that to be so refreshing because kind of like what you were saying, like you never checked in with yourself. You didn't mm-hmm. know what you want, how yeah. you felt. And to hear you saying, I want this, I want that, and just kind of dreaming and um, from the feel of everything, yeah. like yeah. this is what's possible for me. So I, I found that to be so, like, just so refreshing. But um, as you were saying, like, a lot of times we just don't. Mm-hmm. We don't know what we want. Right. And until we take the time to think about, well, what do we want, mm-hmm. we can't create what we want. Exactly, <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just... Maybe December, I uh, heard something about uh, designing your life, Mm -hmm. the life that you want. Mm -hmm. So then I started to implement those things into my life, like daily affirmations, Mm -hmm. um, just speaking life into your life Mm -hmm. and saying what it is that you want. And just, it, it happens. And in the past... Since January 14th until now, it's been a a drastic change. (laughs) And it's been an amazing ride. And I'm like, wow, wow. (laughs) That's a specific date. So why do you have that specific date? Well, January 14th is when I went into a residential uh, program uh, for depression. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in North Carolina, Durham, North Carolina, mm-hmm. and it was so, uh, it was a, an amazing experience, and when you have that time to yourself, mm-hmm. and you and you have people all around you asking you questions about you, mm-hmm. then you have time to sit back and, and think, okay, you know, this is what I want, this is what I want my life to look like. How am I going to implement a plan to get there? And it was just nice to have that time to, to realize those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yep, that was the day I left Richmond and went to Durham. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's awesome. And you mentioned a little bit earlier, you said that when you came to Richmond, mm-hmm. um, you felt like coming to Richmond was a time for you to slow down. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I guess, you know, being, being living in Pittsburgh and being born in New York, um, those northern states they're so much faster mm-hmm. everything is you know so um, when I'm in Virginia even though you know it's not really the south but I feel it's it the is. south <laughs> <laughs> but you know you just slow down take it easy um, and I have time to reflect Mm-hmm. So when I finally slowed myself down from all the busyness that was in my head, not <laughs> just in my environment, mm-hmm. but in my head, that's when, you know, I had time to dream mm-hmm. about what what I want. Mm-hmm. So in this conversation, you actually said a lot, even though um, you're not necessarily speaking from a spiritual person or, um, I mean, perspective mm-hmm. or like a 
you know, some people call it a woo-woo perspective. Yeah. It's like you've hit on so many of the things that we talk about in the mm-hmm. podcast. Mm-hmm. So in terms of, like, having a dream, mm-hmm. um, knowing what your feelings are, putting your feelings out there, um, right. taking time to be still, mm-hmm. reflecting, being yeah. quiet. And so all those things played a role. In, but the first thing that you did, the very first thing was you made a decision. Yes. You made a decision to get out of that relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, to protect yourself, your body, your physical. And once you um, decided on something, Mm -hmm. then it's like other things just began to line up for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then along with, you know, everything lining up, I realized, you know, hey, you got to, you got to give back to yourself. Mm -hmm. So me reading and doing a lot of personal um, development and, getting new habits mm-hmm. and saying my daily uh, affirmation, which my favorite one is, um, I am always the head and never the tail. <laughs> I am always, I am forever a conqueror. Um, you know, so things like that is really helped. Mm-hmm. So. so, yeah, that is so wonderful. And I can, like, your spirit is just always so warm mm-hmm. and welcoming. And it's hard to imagine that you were in a place of darkness just not even that long ago. Yes. And I remember seeing a post that you did, um, and you can help me with the post, but mm-hmm. it said something to the effect of um, you don't always need a degree to get to mm-hmm. where you want. Yes. Um, it said um, uh, God qualifies. You don't need a degree because God qualifies. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean... A lot of people, they have the passion, they, you know, study whatever it is that they're passionate about. For me, that's that's food, that's business, entrepreneurship, and anything about it, I pick up a book, I look up a YouTube video, mm-hmm. you know, and I want to learn and soak it up, mm-hmm. saturate myself <laughs> in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes down to my two businesses, um, I just want to do what I love every day and I previously was working um, in a call center where I'm answering calls all day long Mm -hmm. and you know at some point you're like oh I'm tired I don't want to do this you know but now that I have these two businesses it's like oh I can't wait to get up and do this and do that you know That makes a difference. Yes. yes. And it's, it doesn't feel like work. Mm-hmm. It feels like fun. Mm-hmm. You know, this morning I woke up at like 3 a.m. so that I can go bake. <laughs> and I was happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> Usually I'm like, 3 a.m., that's an ungodly hour. <laughs> yeah, imagine going to the call center at yes. 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'm just, I just found a way to tap in. You know, and make things happen in my life and just make the blessings become so much more abundant. And I've never felt this abundant in my life, not even materialistically, Mm -hmm. just spiritually, Mm -hmm. being so happy, feeling so blessed. Mm -hmm. So it's an amazing thing to just just speak life and, and feed your spirit the right things and not, you know looking at negative things or wallowing in, Mm -hmm. you know, depression, you know, because when I first got diagnosed, I was like, oh, yeah, my depression or this depression or my, because, you know, a lot of (laughs) when we get sick, we say, oh, yeah, my arthritis. Mm -hmm. Stop claiming it. (laughs) (laughs) It's not yours. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. yeah, those things really helped me out, so. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on this show. Of and course. it's like, I feel like we can go in so many different directions <laughs> yeah. from here. So um, hopefully you'll be open to coming back on this show oh, one course. day soon. I would love to. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and so I hope you all really could um, pull from what Erica was saying again in terms of knowing what you want. I mean, and the thing that she just now said about feeling abundant, like she feels abundant, even though maybe it's not material at this moment, but if you're radiating that out in the world, Mm -hmm. I know pretty soon the next time she comes, I'm going to be like, (laughs) okay, Erica, tell us how you made this fortune. (laughs) 
So, um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoy Erica as much as I did. Again, it's Chef Erica. Um, if you can tell them how um, they can meet I you. I am on Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter. Um, you can either find me on the handle of Erica Banks or House of Lazuli. That's my online boutique. And coming soon, our new website for Sugar and Sage Restaurant and Menu Consulting. Thank you very thank much. You. And thank you guys for joining us today. And make sure you check out my website at arvetmclean.com. Until next time. Bye.